Well, thank you all for coming out tonight. And for those of you who couldn't make it here, thank you for watching at home. It has been my honor to be your mayor for the past 18 months. Much has been accomplished during that time. We can look forward to infrastructure improvements, including the rebuilding of Saguaro Boulevard and the implementation of a good sound pavement management plan into the future. The median on Avenue of the Fountains will get a much needed makeover with shade and benches and new fountains and an electrical and irrigation system we can count on. It will be a great improvement to our park system for all to enjoy. Our business community finally got the small changes to the sign ordinance they've been hoping for to help their businesses thrive in these difficult times. There also has been a lot of streamlining in government, everything from making it easy for a restaurant to put tables and chairs outside to take advantage of our gorgeous sunshine, to more accessible forms and permits now put on our website for the convenience of the store owner. We've strengthened our partnership with our neighbor, the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation, welcoming in their new president and council. We have pledged to work together to improve the economic climate for both of us, to support each other's events, and to strengthen a lasting friendship. We've developed a good, sound economic development plan to take Fountain Hills into the future years and have just recently taken on the important task of promoting tourism. All of this has been accomplished with a very limited staff working hard every day dedicated to their jobs to bring you, our residents, the service you deserve. We are beginning to see building once again in town that will bring in much needed revenue. These new homes will bring new neighbors to our town that will help our businesses thrive, fill some of those empty desks at school, and help us to continue to pay for the amenities that make our town the great place to live and play. We've expanded our volunteer program taking advantage of our town's residents' expertise and their very generous gift of their time. This has enabled us to continue many of the wonderful events and programs that have become a part of our lives. We've developed a strong working relationship with other East Valley cities that enabled us to defeat a legislative bill that would have been devastating economically to our town. That fight started right here in Little Fountain Hills and pitted us against the Goliaths of state government, and we won. Of course, with the important help of State Representative John Cavanaugh, who actually was rewarded with a champion award from the League of Cities and Towns for his efforts. I promised you when I took office that I would work hard for you, keep our government transparent, listen to what you have to say, and spend every taxpayer dollar carefully. I've also managed to save a few animals along the way. I have kept that promise and reaffirm it to you this evening. Thank you. And now we're going to go on to our slideshow. I want to thank the staff who contributed to this presentation that you are about to see with a special thanks to Shauna Williams for our reception and for the outstanding job she's done helping me with this presentation. First, we look at how Fountain Hills has moved ahead in 2013. We've managed the difficult fiscal issues while maintaining desirable services and amenities. We made progress with our strategic plan, implemented beneficial policies for our community, improved our parks and other amenities, 
We've collaborated with local organizations and neighboring communities on mutually desirable projects. We brought innovative special events and more tourism to Fountain Hills. We've managed and upgraded the pavement on our streets and inspired civic pride and volunteerism in Fountain Hills. Our finance director gave a quarterly financial report at our last meeting, so I'm just going to touch on some of the highlights. The first are our revenues, and this chart is just showing you what all of our revenue funds and how they're divided. You can see that our general fund makes up the largest portion and that pays for the most with our fire, police, parks, community center. So that's, that's the largest portion. Then we have the revenue by source, showing you where that money comes from. Local sales tax, biggest chunk. That's why we need our businesses to thrive here. And then we also get money from the state in sales tax and income tax, and we call that our state shared, part of our state shared revenue. And that's given out by the state based on population. You can see that our local sales tax is up from the previous year, which is good news. Retail is up. So thanks, everyone, for shopping Fountain Hills. You've been doing a great job. Look at the restaurants. The restaurants are up. We're out there eating in the restaurants, taking our families out in Fountain Hills and having a great time. Telecom is up. That means utilities are up. So, so far, it's lots of good news. Construction. Well, we're never going to be where we used to be during the big construction boom. But we're doing okay. You probably noticed that a lot of the developments that were left half done or partially done are now being finished. Fire Rock, the Enclave, those are being finished. And we're also looking forward to some of the larger developments coming in, like Adaro Canyon. We've also seen some lots with single-family homes and multi-family homes going up. So it's, it's pretty positive as far as construction. Most of the time, people want to know just how did we do this year as compared to last year as far, as far as spending. And you can see with the different departments, most of it is pretty much the same or a little bit under. Law enforcement and fire and emergency are up, pretty much cost of living. So it looks like we're doing OK from last year to this year. Highway user revenue fund. Very often you'll hear us call that HERF. And that's money that we get from the state, our share of the pot, which is divided up among all the cities and towns by population. That money can be used for maintenance of roads, not for, not for new roads, but for maintenance. And that money comes from vehicle license taxes, gasoline taxes, but it's all divided according to population. There's a lot of restricted funds. Some are restricted by statute, some by council decision. So you have to pay off your bonds. We set aside money for downtown fund. That's how we're able to redo the median. So this just gives you a little example of that. And the summary is basically that things are looking up. We expect January and February returns to be even higher with our winter visitors here. So this is just until the end of the year, so it's looking pretty good. And now meet our new economic development specialist, Scott Cooper. Some of you have seen him at the meetings, and he is a great addition to our team. He comes to us with a lot of experience in economic development, from Scottsdale and Peoria. He's just working part-time, but he's already started doing a great job. We're really glad to welcome Scott on board. Development services. All of what you see here is under development services. So anything to do with what you might think of engineering and roads is all there. Planning and zoning, engineering, building safety, facilities, streets, and the two commissions that are under it are Planning and Zoning and Board of Adjustment. So all of those are under that one heading. 
here's our Saguaro Boulevard improvements that we're very anxious to see get started. And the design estimate is to take six months, followed by a two-month public bid process. Construction may start in December of 2014, if all goes according to the schedule. And it's anticipated to take six months to complete. And there's a little kind of an artist rendering of what something on our median will look like when it's finished. And you can see we're looking forward to benches and nice gathering area with shades and some light. And it's going to be a great addition to Avenue of the Fountains. And hopefully it's going to bring people out to enjoy the downtown. Pavement management program. This was something that was just implemented and divides up the entire town into seven districts. Now each district will be done on a rotating basis to maintain the roads that we have. We've already done quite a bit of work patching up the roads, and I think everybody's been pretty happy with the way the roads are looking right now. Sometimes it's a little inconvenient. I know they were just doing some work on Palisades near Avenue of the Fountains, and it was near, near Fountain Hills Boulevard, and it was a little backed up, and I got stuck in that, and the cones were up, and you, you know, but. It was only a couple of days, and in the end, everything looked great. So we're going to have to be a little patient sometimes if they're working on the road. Um, but I know that the end result is worth it. Recycling. We've been doing a great job recycling. Uh, Republic Services um, has set up the recycling with a new company called Ripple. And at Fountain Hills has been doing a great job recycling. And it's really easy to recycle. You put all your recycles in one can and all your other stuff in the other. It's not like it used to be years ago. In the, in the 80s, uh, we started recycling back in New Jersey. And we had to have six big barrels. And we had to divide up every colored glass, every colored plastic, yeah, John had to clip all the rings off of the plastic because you couldn't have the metal rings with the plastic. You had to soak off every label. Let me tell you, that was really intensive. You really, really, really had to be dedicated to recycling to do that. But the end result was that in our town, we had the first state-of-the-art recycling facility. And because we had this enormous facility in our town, what they did for us was they gave us free garbage pickup in just our town. So when I saw how great that we were doing with the recycling, everybody knows that the company gets money for the recycling, I sat down with Republic Services and said, you know, can't you give us a little something extra? Because you're making all this extra money, you've got a monopoly in town, and you've got the recycling. So out of that came the community grant program. They're giving us $10,000 every year for a community project. We have a citizens committee made up of only residents that decided on three projects. And those projects are decided by the general population of Fountain Hills. You just go online and you vote with your points that you get each time you recycle. And we have three going right now. One is for the theater, one is for the museum, and one is for the greening program. So in the end, we'll find out who won for their project, and they will get $10,000. And we're looking for a $10,000 grant every single year. So I think that's at least something else. And I, and I Councilman Yates is, he's, uh, um, he's up there. <laughs> And I want to thank him, though, because he's been helping me also in uh, negotiating these extra givebacks with Republic Services. Uh, we also got a nice check for the Extended Hands Food Bank. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to be talking to them about maybe some other programs. They're interested in doing some more, so we're going to take advantage of that. Community services. There's a lot under that. Recreation, tourism, parks senior services, community center, 
And those are the commissions that are under community services, the Parks and Recreation, the Senior Services, the Community Center, and the McDowell Mountain Preservation. Recreation, we've expanded some of the events in Fountain Hills, collaborating with nonprofits and with uh, businesses. Sammy Fine Jewelry just had a Love in the Hills in March uh, the 22nd, actually, we're looking forward to our second annual Kite Festival. And we had the Chinese Lantern and Folk Festival. All of these and others that we have in town are just helping out our business community and helping to bring in more revenue through sales tax. The town also hosts some special events, concerts in the park, movie in the park. My grandson loves movie in the park extravaganza, and ballet under the stars. That is a very popular one. You notice that really cute bunny on the right there? <laughs> There's also partners, partners with organizations. We partner with uh, nonprofits, Oktoberfest and St. Patrick's Day celebration. And those bring in much needed revenue for our service groups who then distribute that to the rest of the town. We had our best turkey trot this year, 1,658 participants. That broke our record. That was really exciting. We also saw that our Kathy Whirl received the Young Professional Award from the Arizona Parks and Recreation Association. And you can't see that bottom line, but that bottom line says that the Fountain Hills Times and Let's Go also received a joint media award from the association. Tourism. We saw the International Trail Symposium held here at the Radisson Fort McDowell in April, and it showcased Fountain Hills and Fort McDowell. We had attendees from every state except Nebraska. What's up with Nebraska? I don't know why they couldn't come. I heard they've got trails. But we had all these other countries, and it was really exciting, and it was exciting for me to go there and do a welcome from Fountain Hills. Parks, we've done lots, lots with parks. You've seen we've done improvements at Golden Eagle Park ball field, um, new, new scoreboards. We have refurbished water fountains. You know, everything is upkeep. And there's also been a lot of additions to art. But remember, the art is donated. And when I stress that over and over to people, and they still think we buy, buy the art, we don't. The art is donated, sometimes in memory of someone. Sometimes it's just a group that gets together or one of our civic organizations. Um, so the art around each one has a plaque next to it that tells you who is who donated. And I, I know it was a family that donated the new Reagan um, statue the, that's very popular. Everybody wants to take pictures with the presidents. And the ring that you see down there called Infinity Ring that was donated by Dwight Johnson's family. So that's, a, that's actually the ring is a, a, a favorite with kids. You always see them taking pictures of them in the middle of the ring. It's really nice to see. You also get a nice view of the fountain through it if you take a nice picture and you go down there. So. We, we thank all of our families here in Fountain Hills that donate pieces of art. And you can go around and you'll recognize all the names. Some of the people are year-round residents and some are just our winter visitors who have donated these beautiful pieces. Uh, there's been uh, some improvements to the park. You saw the beautiful mural that was done by the school that's at the park. Um, there's been a lot of projects done through Make a Difference Day and the master plan for Four Peaks Park was approved and those hopefully we would get the funding to put those improvements into action. We've also started what we call the Fountain Hills Integrated Trail System. Uh, that's just really a, a system of uh, a trail that follows a sidewalk that's completed and we were able to open the first one in April, and that's Sim cutting the ribbon there with the manager, and uh, that looks like Mark, Mark Mayer there. 
And that one, um, you can follow the trail and it tells you how far you're walking. You know, not everybody is able to go to the parks and do big hiking and, or sometimes you don't always feel like that and you just want to take a walk, but you want to know how far you're going. And so this, these are going to be nice trails and there's quite a few of them that are planned. As soon as we get the sidewalks completed, then we'll be able to open up the new sections. And I believe the next one that we're working on is the Falcon Trail. And as you guessed it, that's the one that's gone around by the high school. So we can look forward to that. Senior services. Well, you know, we have a lot of programs for seniors here in Fountain Hills. But the seniors are one of our biggest group that give back to the community. Our seniors are always stepping up to volunteer whenever we need people for events or just anything that's going on in town, you will always see the seniors volunteering. Uh, we also have home delivered meals and 12 to 13 fiscal year, 6,945 meals were delivered. And that tells you that there is a need in Fountain Hills for that kind of a service. Senior Services also plans health classes for the seniors besides just activities that are fun. Community Center. Well, we have the, the picture in the lower left was really nice visit that we had from the governor. And the other pictures show some additional art and some benches that completed the Centennial Circle. And uh, it's, it's been the scene of weddings. Uh, we have a new, we didn't get Mike's picture up there. We have a new uh, staff member who's running the community center, Mike Fensel, and he's doing a great job. He's already booked quite a few weddings for the coming year. And so uh, clubs, organizations use it, and it's, it's just a beautiful facility that we're trying to make more use out of. All right, fire and rural metro. Here we go, fire department. We have, here's the um, statistics from the fire department which show that they did 2,800 calls for service. 89% of the calls were for emergency medical. 8,500 is property fire loss, but over one million worth of property was saved from fire damage. So there's our guys right there at work. We had a change in leadership. Uh, fire chief is now Randy Roberts and our assistant chief is Dave Ott, though Randy Roberts is not a stranger to us. He's been with us for a very long time, so we were uh, very excited when he became our fire chief. And Dave is a wonderful addition to our team. Yesterday was great. I had the privilege of being there for the opening of the addition to the firehouse station one that's on Palisades and they have done a fabulous job in there. Uh, it is, it, it's not, as you can see by the next picture, they've not gone overboard, it's not overly elaborate, but it's clean, it has separate facilities for the men and the women and they have closet space to put their things. They spend a lot of time there. They sleep there and they do such a great job for us, putting their lives on the line for us, putting their lives on the line to protect our property. The very least that we could do is give them a nice place to stay while they're waiting for the calls. So I, I, it looks like they're very happy with their new facility and I'm glad that we were able to do it. They've done a beautiful job on the outside too. It looks like a house on the outside and um, I, I think they're very happy with what they have now. Here's the new engine, number 822. Uh, though we don't have all new engines, I was looking at one yesterday that I was told is 15 years old, and we don't just get rid of our equipment. If we can maintain it and keep it, we do that. Um, I was told by the fire chief that if that 15-year-old one had been in Phoenix, it would have been gotten rid of a long time ago. But we don't do that. We try to be fiscally responsible with the equipment and all of the firemen keep them in really good condition. They had them all nice and washed and shiny for the open house too, so we enjoyed that. It was a good, it was a good tour. 
These are some of the other activities that the fire department does. They have the fire explorers. Uh, they also relocate snakes, not if they're outside, but if they're in your house, you can call them and they'll come help you with that. Um, I actually had two snakes in my house. They were small ones, so I got rid of them myself, but if they were a little bigger, I would have called the guys. Um, they also rescued two bats and one owl, so they do lots of great things too. They also have the care program, which is something that is is needed. It's uh, for especially children in crisis during an event. They will also help you install car seats. And if you don't have little kids and you haven't had an experience with those new car seats, you don't know how difficult it is to actually get it right. The instructions are in English, but to actually get them right, you need a fireman to tell you. And they do it for you to make sure that the little ones are safe. All right, now on to law enforcement. Deputies and detectives, they documented over 80 fraud cases, and those were all related to the Basher computer security breach. Everybody knows about that. Most of us were all caught up in that. And they also, now see, I, I work with the coalition, and I did not know what a DMT lab was, but apparently we had one here in Fountain Hills, and it's only the second one that's ever been discovered in the state. A DMT is a new hallucinogenic drug. It seems like every time you learn one, they, there comes up another one. So um, I'm really sorry to hear that we had one of two in the state, but I'm glad that our guys were right on it and got rid of it. They've also arrested two subjects that were wanted for a lot of burglaries in Fountain Hills homes, and one had actually involved pointing a handgun at the owner. So we're certainly glad that that one was taken care of. They've also made a lot of drug arrests and, and in our past year, which they say led to a, decre a decrease in burglaries in Fountain Hills. Our resource officer, Deputy Jill, she takes care of the high school and the middle school. Uh, she does the drug and alcohol interdiction for the students also. She does the text-a-tip, uh, and that program continues to grow. Also, Midnight Madness. She is just the one resource officer that we have, and she has to divide her time between the two uh, between the two schools, she also sits on the coalition, and she does a great job. Now let's look at our court. Our court, we have a teen court, and they've done 19 cases in 2013, and six formal teen court hearings and 13 teen court cases divided by, decided by the teen jury panel. And one of our senior volunteers, Joe Nelson, is been a long time volunteer with Teen Court, besides everything else that she volunteers for. But I, I have to mention her because anywhere I go, it seems like you see Joe Nelson volunteering. And she loves the Teen Court. She does an excellent job. And we're so happy that she's kept up with that for so many years. Now meet Keith Kaplan, our court administrator. He joined us in 2013, and he's been doing a great job. Uh, he's currently recruiting a new presiding judge. But in the meantime, he has been keeping the court functioning by rotating pro tem judges. Keith is a great addition to our staff. Now, I wanted to, the commissions to be recognized at this state of the town because the commissions do a good job for Fountain Hills. They put in a lot of time, and they are all volunteers. Strategic Planning Advisory Commission, you might sometimes hear us refer to that as SPAC. They've assisted the town in the economic development plan, and they're working closely with the town manager to set priorities for the strategic goals that the council has put out. Then we have the Planning and Zoning Commission. Most people know what they do. They review the plan, sign ordinance, concept plans, special use permits. That's pretty self-explanatory what, what they do. Public safety advisory commissions, they, they besides or organizing Public Safety Day, which this year is going to be on April 5th, they are assisting with the fire station relocation project, and they also helped with the contract for Rural Metro. We have Municipal Property Corporation that assists the town in acquiring and financing property. 
Board of Adjustment, they heard five variance requests in 2013, including the medical marijuana dispensary hours and methods of operation. Senior Services Advisory Commission deals with senior service, seniors on the elderly, disabled. They work with Senior Services Incorporated to raise money for home delivered meals. And they also work on transportation services for our seniors. Community Center Advisory Commission, uh, they're proactive in dealing with citizen stakeholder concerns regarding that facility and its operation and its, poli its policies. And they work very well with Senior Services and the Senior Services Advisory Commission. Parks and Recreation Commission, that's kind of obvious what they do. They take care of all of our parks, and we do have quite a bit of it. But they also take care of permits, special events in the park. Uh, they maintain the fields for our, the athletics. Um, and they organize the facility use. McDowell Mountain Preserve Commission, they are pretty much focused on our preserve and are looking forward to having our trailhead maybe soon, they're hoping, if Adiro Canyon is able to come through. Volunteer program. We have a great volunteer program. We have a staff member who organizes that, Heather Ware. This provides our opportunity for residents to participate and contribute to the operation of the town. We have just wonderful volunteers. They're positive, they're pleasant, they're, they're great ambassadors for the community. We have over 700 volunteers, and this is just a listing of some of the great events. You will probably look at this right now and say, yeah, I helped out on a couple of those because we do have so many volunteers. And if you are not a volunteer right now, you probably have something up there that you're interested in. And remember, no experience is necessary. Give a Lift program. This is a wonderful, wonderful program where, where people have volunteered to drive elderly or disabled uh, residents to uh, medical appointments. Um, and they actually use their own cars to do this. To facilitate this, we now have on our website where if someone needs a service, they can post it on the map on the website, which shows their location. And one of the volunteers who's a driver can look and see what is the need, can I do it, am I available that day? And they can actually just go online and accept doing that ride for that particular person. We have some volunteers that regularly just drive the same people back and forth for tests at the hospital or to doctors. It's, it's actually a, a really incredible giving uh, program. Make a Difference Day, fifth year of the program, also run by our volunteer coordinator. And it is, and it's called Make a Difference Day, but if you really want to think about what it is, it's neighbor helping neighbor. That's what it's all about. We do have a lot of people with experience, electrical plumbing and carpentry, uh, but no experience is necessary. I know I can't do any of that, but I can paint a wall and, uh, and I can do other things. We get tool donations. Uh, I know we get, a, we get sponsorships. Ace Hardware is always one of our big contributors to give us buckets and tools and things like that. But there's room for everybody to volunteer. There's everything from cleaning out someone's yard because they're too disabled, they can't do it, or they're too elderly, or they can't afford someone to do it for them. Um, just some painting, some fix up around someone's home. And it's a great feeling. It's just one day that you give up that day to help your neighbor. And I know that there's some people that actually started helping one family, and then even when that day was over, they still go back and help them in the, in, in the future. So it's also got neighbors together with neighbors. It's a wonderful program. Look for it next year and come out and volunteer just for that day. Mayor's Youth Council, that's a picture of us last year. Um, it, and that's a trip that we took to the Capitol. We actually just took a trip to the Capitol 
the other day, and it was wonderful. Um, was it yesterday we were there? And we had a great tour by State Representative John Cavanaugh. He took us down to the basement and showed us everything about how a bill becomes a law. We got to sit in on hearings. Um, we just, it was just a fabulous learning experience for the kids. They had a great time. Mayor's Youth Council also does a lot for the town, volunteering. They volunteered at the Turkey Trot. You might not have recognized one, but she was in the outfit. Uh, holiday celebration. They all, we also have our own street that we adopt. That's Westby. And we, on a regular basis, go out there and pick up the trash. Look at this. Look at our terrific volunteers. You might see her picture in there. There's Jo, by the way. She's standing right next to Heather in the middle picture at the bottom. She's Jo Nelson, or I was talking about. You see the group of kids, that's Maureen. She does a docent art walk for the kids, and she actually wrote the program for them. And then you see some of our other wonderful volunteers. There they all doing. There's us doing Adopt a Street, and there's the Captain Joe Rodriguez giving the Mayor's Youth Council a tour of the, of the uh, offices over here. They like the jail the best, of course. That was the fun part. And here's some more of our volunteers. Another Mayor's Youth Council volunteer up the upper left. She did work on our website for a long time. And these are just some of the faces of all the people that help out. Adopt the Street is a great program. Uh, you can adopt a street just in your neighborhood with your neighbors, or you can do it as a group. Um, it helps us because, because of the limited uh, revenue that we have. We have only one landscape company that does our rights of way and our medians. And uh, because of that, one section that they do today, they're not going to get back to do that section for quite a while. And unfortunately, we can't seem to stop people from throwing trash out their windows, though. I know it's not the residents of Fountain Hills. So we have to get out there, and we have to pick it up. So Adopt-A-Street does that. It helps. And uh, you can do your own neighborhood. I know that Shea is one of our biggest problems for collecting trash, uh, probably because of the fast food restaurants there. Um, there's one organization that does kind of down by the fast food restaurants where the uh, speed limit gets a little bit lower, but where the speed limit is higher, people are rushing by over 50 miles an hour. We really don't want anybody doing that, so we do have the professionals do that. But the trash did pick, did start to accumulate quite a bit, and the sheriff sent his chain gang in a couple of times to pick up a long shay. So that, that helped us out a lot. That freed up our landscaping crew to go on to another section. So we do our best, and uh, so we can use some more streets for adopt a street. You'll get your own name on the, up there that says it's your street, so think about it. Interested in volunteering? There you go. There's lots and lots of op opportunities. The easiest way is just to give Heather a call and say you want to volunteer, and I guarantee she'll find you a spot. The coalition, the coalition's mission. Through community-wide collaboration, Fountain Hills will work together to reduce youth substance abuse. These are all the organizations that have come together in the coalition. I'm representing the town, but we also have Mark Mayer, our community service director. We have a church, law enforcement, Captain Rodriguez, and lots of other experts in the field, businesses, organization, members of the school. The Fountain Hills Times is there. We have experts in the field of uh, uh, anti-drug and alcohol. We have parents, health care. All of us come together every other month for a meeting at the school. This is, uh, they do have a regular board of directors that meets, and they have a lot of major successes, text to tip being one of them. It's a six minute MCSO response time. Uh, it's been a great help in allowing students to anonymously uh, talk, tell law enforcement about an alcohol party that they know about or drug party that's going on and that instantaneously, almost instantaneously, gets right to MCSO 
and they have had lots of success in breaking up those drinking parties. There's also a safe homes network, which is uh, uh, parents, grandparents, you pledge that you will make sure that there's no drinking, underage drinking or, or drug use in your home, and you sign a pledge to that effect. And they have 300 families so far that are signed up. There's also a lot of media that works with the coalition to spread the word. There's a lot of youth involvement also. Middle school just started the Above That Club, encouraging students down a different path from alcohol and drugs. There was an essay contest, 325 entries, and I, the winners are actually in the Times this week. The coalition was awarded at the Hope Award with the best coalition in the state. So that was a great honor. It was a great honor to be there. And there's Dwight Johnson accepting the honor on, uh, and the award on our behalf. And that's it. And you can't see what it says at the bottom, but it says, working for you to make Fountain Hills even greater. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. So uh, I know a lot of you just came for the presentation, and so I won't be insulted if you want to quietly leave the meetings and we'll continue on with the other business. That's up to you. Okay, so I'll just take a minute to go up, and you can exit if you want. But thank you all for coming. <laughs>